Hi, everyone. I'm Kazuhiko Minematsu from NAC Corporation. In this talk, I'd like to talk about uh, Misuto resistant authenticated encryption that enables a fast decryption. The title of my talk is Fast Decryption, a new feature of Misuto resistant A. Let me start with a brief introduction of nonce based A. This is a symmetric key encryption for confidentiality and authenticity. Its encryption outputs a cipher text and a tag, which is used to authenticate the input. And the decryption returns a plain text if the input to the decryption is authentic. A formally, an input to encryption consists of key K, nonce N, associated data A and plain text M. Uh, the output is ciphertext C and tag T. The tuple NACT is sent to the receiver. An input to the decryption consists of key K and this tuple, and it returns the plain text M if the tuple is authentic. Otherwise, it returns an error symbol. For NAS based AE, NAS must be unique for each encryption. When it is repeated, the vesting attack can happen. A well known example is GCM. Even one repetition of NAS in GCM allows the adversary to recover its subkey and subsequently a universal forgery. In theory, the solution is easy by using, say, a counter or a random value of a sufficient length, but in practice, NAS may repeat due to various reasons, such as wrong configuration or a poor random sources, so on. Hence, an A scheme that registers potential NAS repeat is desirable. As an answer to this question, Shrimpton and Rollaway proposed SIV. It derives tag T as a mark of total input consisting of AD and plaintext. Here, AD may contain nonce. The picture of SIV is shown here. Tag T is used as an IV for an IV based encryption, say by counter mode. And for decryption, it first decrypts C by using this IV and compares IV with the output of PRF taking associated data and the decrypted print text. SIV maintains security even if NAS repeats as long as the total input tuple of A and N and M is unique for each encryption. From this feature, it is called misused resistant A or MRA for short. In fact, MRA receives significant attention and the most of known MRA scheme rely on SIV or its variants, as you can see here for some examples. The security of MRA can be described in two notions as in the case of nonce based AE, memory privacy and authenticity. For privacy, it requires that the encryption outputs are pseudo-random, as long as the total inputs are distinct. For authenticity, it requires that a non-trivial forgery is hard. SIV fulfills these notions. To consider efficiency of SIV, uh, suppose we use a block cipher, then SIV needs a MAC or a PRF and an IV-based encryption and each can be realized by some modes, say CMAC and counter mode. And this means that the rate is one half for encryption and decryption, where the rate means that number of input blocks that can be processed by one primitive call. Uh, here we note that rate one nonce based AE is indeed possible, for example, using OCB. This means that uh, to build an MRA by SIV, we have an efficiency gap.
To fill the gap, uh, this article proposed a new scheme called Decryption First SIV DFV. It is an MRA scheme that achieves rate one for decryption while preserving the uh, one half rate for encryption. Here, rate one decryption means that the decryption of DFV is as fast as plain unauthenticated decryption. Also, rate one half is necessary to ensure privacy because we need a two pass operation. Thus, this implies that the uh, DFV's efficiency is best possible uh, with respect to the MRA. Uh, note that this is for the case of using a block cipher. If we use a different primitive, the resulting rates of DFV will change. Roughly saying, DFV's decryption rate can be the best possible decryption rate of nonce based AE using that primitive, and the encryption rate can be the best possible encryption rate of SIV using that primitive. We will consider the case of using a tweakable block cipher later. So let me describe uh, our ideas. In a nutshell, our idea is compose a nonce based AE and a PRF to build an MRA, assuming the former uh, is the right one. The idea is simple, uh, but to my knowledge, it has never formally studied. Some cross ideas can be found in the literature, but for different purposes, and uh, they were not to improve the efficiency of MRA. We propose three compositions called DFV1 and 2 and 3, and prove their security block, uh, block box security of, and based on the block box security of non based AE and the PRF. We also show two concrete schemes based on OCB and the theta CB. Uh, the router is an idealized OCB using a tweakable block cipher. All proofs are rather intuitive, but we will see some pitfalls when we try to optimize the constructions. All right, let me show some Stroman schemes. First, we derive IVV as SIV, but feed it to nonce based AE rather than the IVV based encryption. This nonce based AE yields a tag T, so the encryption outputs is the tuple of V, V, and A, and C, and T. Decryption is just a decryption of nonce based AE we use. Undering nonce based AE does not take associated data. Uh, which we call plain NAE or PNAE for short. Actually, this is wrong because the associated data is discarded at the decryption, so it is not authenticated. For the second try, uh, the associated data must be verified at decryption, so we use a non plain NAS based AE, uh, which is also known as an AEAD. Then the AD is now authenticated. But as you can see here, the decrypt encryption wreaks a match of um, plain text, even if AD is different. So it does not fail for the MRA security. So to get a correct solution, we must reflect the whole input. So the, then it works. We call this scheme DFV1. Although DFV1 works, but AD is now twice processed at encryption, this is worse than the yeah, SIV. To get rid of such in, in an inefficiency, we assume that the PRF taking A and M is decomposed into two smaller PRFs, F and G, 
and A is processed by F independently of M. We let S denote the result of processing of A. And we reuse this S to bring associated data's information into the plane and non-space A. In the end, this problem is closely related to a conversion of a plane non-space A into a non-space A. In fact, this conversion problem has been studied by Rogaway at the CCS 2002. He suggested two options. The first is the ciphertext translation, which XORs S to the tag, as you can see. Uh, in the rest part of the slide. The second is non-stealing, which attaches the row associated data to NAS, assuming there is some redundant space. The latter can be easily extended to uh, the case of using S, which is a PRF output of associated data, instead of associated data itself. Um, Based on these conversions, we propose two schemes. The first, uh, the actually a second scheme, the FV2, use, uh, uses ciphertext translation, and this slide shows its encryption and the decryption. For simplicity, we assume unfinished decryption routine denoted by UDEC and of UDEC for plain text announced based encryption. The decryption receives the tuple NCT and then computes a U deck of N and C that produces M and U and finally compares T and U. Now, this assumption holds for most of non non space A schemes. The third scheme, the FV3, uses a generalized version of NAS stealing. And yeah, I will skip here. This slide shows the probable security bounds of all schemes. I'm not going into the details, but this bound tells us the security is reduced to the underlying NA security and the PRF security. For the proofs of DFB 2 and 3, we use the simulation framework uh, proposed by Logaway at his uh, CCS 2002 paper. There are some remarks. First, the bounds are possibly not tight. For example, if we use OCB as an underlying NAE, the FV2 bound will have QD times sigma squared over 2 to the n. It is a cubic degradation and is inherited from the original ciphertext translation bound. Second, some optimizations of the constructions may look easy, but in fact not. For instance, consider taking x orb S and M when computing PRF for A and M. This will improve efficiency as G's input becomes shorter. As a standalone construction, it is fine up to the birthday term, but the fact that S is also used by NAE makes proofs intractable. See the paper for more details. Let me move to the concrete instantiations. The first is a block cipher based one, which we call OCB DFB. More specifically, we use PMAC for PRF and OCB2 for plain non space state encryption, authenticate the encryption, and the entire structure is based on DFB2. The router OCB2F is a fixed version of a block on OCB2, and we adapt it for simplicity of pseudocode. But in fact, OCB3 can be used as well. This scheme achieves a parallel 
misuse resistant AE having encryption rate one half and the decryption rate being one. So this slide shows the bound of OCBDFB. As I mentioned, if we use the generic bound of DFB2, it will introduce uh, some cubic degradation. While the original OCB and the PMAC has quadratic terms, only, only the quadratic terms. However, using a dedicated proof that slightly modified the proof strategy enables a quadratic uh, bound. And as a result, this OCBDFB is half of n bit secure, so yeah, standard style of burst bound security. It's comparable to OCB. The natural question here is how to achieve a stronger beyond the burst bound security. There are some possible directions to achieve BBB security, but here we focus on using TBC. It has an additional input called tweak in addition to key and message. We assume that the both message block and the tweak are end bits. Our goal is to achieve end bit security. Then the IVP must be at least two end bits. Uh, because of the introduction of the, this cubic term with respect to the IV length. To implement to PRF, there is already a nice construction ZMAC as it has two n bit output and n bit security. However, to implement plain non spaced AE, the popular Theta CB3 does not work as it now sees n bits. To overcome this limitation, we develop Theta CBL, or where L means a longness. It is a variant of a Theta CB3 that has a 2 n bit NAS and accepts a message of 2 to the n blocks as well as the original. The security is n bits. And this figure shows the case of three block encryption of Theta CBL. We note that if we were to use Theta CB, for 2 n bit NAS, the underlying TBC must have 3 n bit tweak. But we avoid this by introducing the XTX tweak extension. Shorter tweak generally implies smaller computation, as one can see in the specifications of skinny tweakable block cipher. Hence, the Theta CBL can be considered as an efficient improvement over Theta CB in addition to the extended NAND space. In the same manner to OCB DFB, we build Theta CB DFB by using ZMAC for PRF and the Theta CBL for plain NAND based AE. Thanks to ZMAC, which processes the two input blocks by one call, the encryption rate now becomes two over three, and the decryption rate is being one. This slide shows a comparison of our proposals and the other SIV-based MRA schemes. A TBC A B denotes a TBC of A bit tweak and B bit block. And as you can see, the OCB DFB and the Theta CB DFB have the encryption rate identical to the best previous scheme while achieving the decryption rate being one. On the downside, because the output contains IV and the tag, the bandwidth is increased. To conclude, this work proposed a simple efficiency improvement of MRA construction by combining ideas of SIV and rate one non-spaced AEs. This also implies that studying on rate one non-spaced AE is also useful to MRA constructions.
there are a number of future directions studying the RUP security of DFP is one of them, where the RUP means that an release of unverified plain text, which uh, is a situation that an plain text is unverified plain text might leak in the decryption. We already showed some pre preliminary results in the paper regarding the RUP security. And the implementation of our schemes and benchmarking will also be needed to see the practical benefit of our proposals. Okay, that's it. Thanks for your attention.